Welcome back guys. I've had several of you ask me to do a video on this, so here it is. About four or so years ago, as you can see on the screen here, I picked up this Makita robotic vacuum for our shop and there really wasn't a lot of info on it. I see several comments in my usual videos about, I didn't even know Makita made a robotic vacuum. Well, that's because it's pretty poorly marketed, but it has a very specific target audience, and that is commercial uses like shops, warehouses, etc. There aren't any long-term reviews of this out there, so I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone here and give you some info on it, how it's held up after four years of daily use here in our detail shop. First off, when I purchased this new in 2019, I paid $1,100 with tax, shipping, and they're up to about thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars now, and that's just the tool. No charger, no batteries, anything like that. And they have an even more expensive one now called the DRC three hundred Z. This is the DRC two hundred Z, and the three hundred is basically just a little bit smarter. It has lidar on top of it. It doesn't have these little sonar sensors like this one has to just bump around. The two hundred Z, this one, I equate it to like a first gen Roomba with a little bit more smarts than that, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But it's advertised as a thirty six volt tool because it. Uses uses two 18 volt Makita batteries, but it only uses one at a time. It can run with only one battery in it, and it does. It has a main brush, two edge brushes, and an actual vacuum in it for lifting the dirt and dust into its dirt bin. So if you look at the reviews on this online, a lot of people are trying to use these in their house, and they complain that it gets stuck on everything, it's loud, it beeps, it has this annoying alarm on it, and that's not the point of this. If you use this in your, in your house, you bought the wrong tool. The reason that I say that this is geared towards commercial environment is first off at the price. You know, it's like twice the cost of everything else. The other thing too, why I say it has first gen Roomba technology is it, it has two modes. You can, it basically just will randomly bump around until it runs out of power. And the second mode is it has a, zig or a zigzag back and forth motion that once it determines the edges, then it goes back and forth and it just keeps doing that until it runs out of power. You can set it with a schedule, one, two, three, five hours to run. I just will just turn it on and let it run after we're done for the day. The downsides, you heard me say that it has this alarm. Well, you can turn it off when it's running, but if it gets stuck on something, it will just beep and beep and beep and beep until it runs out of battery or you come do something. And it's very very loud. The point is to get your attention and it does do that. It has a remote control. We don't really use it, but you can start and stop it if it's nearby. You have to have your business or your shop or whatever robot proofed, just like with a one that you have at home. So cords dangling, it'll get stuck on. The difference is a lot of the newer ones that you use in your home, they have a little bit of smarts to them where if they figure out they're getting stuck, they can back up, figure out a way to get unstuck. What this one will do, it'll try for about two seconds and then just quit and it will make the alarm go off. So we've learned over the years what it gets stuck on and what we have to make sure is picked up before we run it. But overall, it does a fantastic job of cleaning. We have a lot of compound dust in our shop. We have a lot of you know grass, dirt, little fine sand, and it picks it up very well. Another con you have to pay attention to with something like this is the cost of consumables. So the batteries obviously are a consumable. These are the original batteries that we've used every single day. They get charged every day. Here it is four years later. They're still working. They don't last as long as they originally did when they were new. But if you were to go buy one of those, these batteries are $120, $150 a piece. So they're not inexpensive. The cleaning brush bar, still no issues. And it still looks like it's held up well. The side brushes, those are consumable. They're just like very stiff nylon. When you buy them, it comes with an extra set, but when you replace those, they're about $45 for a set, which is really expensive for a piece of plastic. And then the other consumable is it has a very expensive filter in it that you can, you can blow it out with compressed air, and that's what we do. And I haven't had to replace it, but I do have a spare just in case. The replacement filters are about $100 for them. And then there's also a rubber gasket that goes around it that if that wears out or gets damaged, that rubber gasket is about $15. And so long term, the cost of ownership really isn't that expensive if you're going to use it every day in a commercial environment. Makita, if you look on their website, they sell it as something that's going to save you labor cost. If you're paying somebody $15 an hour to sweep your floors in a warehouse and they sweep for an hour a day, that's 220 hours or so in labor that you're saving every year. 
on an, on a normal work year. So that's that's the way it's marketed is a labor saving, money saving tool over time. Long term, what else have I had issues with? The rear wheels, the where they pivot, they are starting to eat into themselves and I'm sure it's just the dirt. There's there's no bearing or anything on the rear pivot assembly. But the plus side to that is the replacement pieces are only about $5 a piece. They of course still make them. But if you're if you are looking to buy something like this, pay attention to parts prices because if there's something that breaks on this and it's out of warranty, it is expensive. Uh, for example, like the main wheel motors, there's two of them. Each side of those, they're like $400. And at that point, you're better off just buying a used one on eBay or something like that. Uh, speaking of eBay, they are selling for around $500 to $800 used on eBay, depending on how used you want to go. Uh, some of them with, some of them without batteries. But overall, we're very happy with it. I'm going to continue to use it in the shop. Uh, it is not a wet, dry type of vacuum. So at least in our instance, with when we have a lot of cars in here, you have to make sure that you know there wasn't moisture from washing a car, dripping on the floor, and then running the vacuum because it will get stuck in the bin with the, the wet dirt, the mud, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's a dry-only vacuum, but it picks up large things. If you had like nails or sawdust, things like that, it does work. You just have to keep the filter clean. And so I, I clean the filter about once a week. And I, I think daily is probably overkill. But the filter is very filthy every time I clean it. And it's mostly the very fine compound dust that we get here in our shop. So would I recommend it to somebody? Yes, but only if you're going to use it as intended in a commercial shop. Don't use this in your home. The Especially on Amazon, if you look at the reviews there, that's what people are complaining about. They're using it in their home. I can't believe that it gets stuck stuck under a bed and everything. That's not the purpose. And it uh, you robot robot proof your business, your shop, whatever, and it will do fantastic. Before we had this, we had an old Neato XV11, which is and really intended for a home. And it just the the dustbin filled up too fast, or it would think it's lost because they're not designed for like these huge spaces. So it would it would run across the the span of the shop, which is about sixty feet, and it would stop in the middle because it thought it was lost. You know, it's it's not designed to run straight for thirty feet. Where this, it doesn't care. It just runs, and when it runs out of battery, it just stops. That's it. You come in in the next morning ready to start work you have a clean shop and you move this off to the side throw the batteries on the charger when you leave you repeat uh, it is a very big vacuum it's very heavy it weighs about 20 or 25 pounds so very very heavy it's loud the vacuum on the back of it you can turn that on and off so it only uses the brushes but it obviously isn't going to pick up as well and so we've also tried because we use mainly milwaukee products in our shop polishers lights drills, etc. that I've tried to buy the Makita to Milwaukee M18 battery adapters. And this does not like it for two reasons. One, the batteries don't fit very well underneath. You really have to press it hard on there to get it. But the second thing is that this, this robot will not recognize the battery. It will give power to it. It will let you turn it on. But when you hit the power button to make it go, it just, it beeps and it won't do anything. So I think that maybe there's some kind of technology or something where it's looking for sp specifically a Makita battery or possibly just a very specific voltage. You have to use the Makita batteries with this. These are the five amp hour batteries. They do make six amp hour batteries if you needed even more time. This particular robot, it will run for when it was new, probably four or five hours. And now it's probably down to about three hours that it runs. It's still sufficient, more than sufficient to clean the shop very well overnight. So I hope this has been informative. The the long term, it's been fantastic. We're going to continue to use it. And if you guys do want to buy one, check out the link in the video description. That's how this channel makes its money to remain unsponsored, unbiased, free of anything like that. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we will see you soon.